In this video, I'm going to be talking about what we mean by taking the expectation of a random variable, and I'm going to be describing this in both the discrete and the continuous cases. So in a discrete case, the example which I'm going to use here is that of throwing a fair die. So a fair die, if you don't know it, is this sort of thing I've drawn up here in the top left, and it's a cube which on each of its side has written a different number, where the numbers go from one to six. So perhaps our random variable x in this case might represent the value which we obtain from throwing a fair die. So our sort of random variable can take on one of six values, starting at one, then go to two, three, and then sort of continuing all the way up to six. So that, those are the sort of values which our random variable can actually take on. And then associated with each of those particular values is a probability that the random variable actually takes on that value. So here I've written the probability that big X, our random variable, equals little x, where little x represents the particular value in question. So the sort of first value here, the probability that x equals 1, in the case of a fair die, this is just 1 over 6. And the probability that x equals 2 is just 1 over 6 again. The probability that x is 3 is 1 over 6. And we sort of continue, likewise, all the way down to 6. OK, so that's sort of defined our problem. How do we then go about finding the expectation of our random variable. And what do we actually mean by taking the expectation? So the way in which we sort of write it is the expectation of a random variable x. And in the discrete case, this is equal to the sum over all particular values which our random variable can take on. So don't notice here that I've written little x to represent the sort of values 1 through 6. And, and then the sum is the probability that big x equals little x, so the probability that our random variable takes on that particular value times x, times that particular value. And so what does this actually mean? Well, the expectation is the sort of value which we would get on average if we were to roll our die a large number of times, or sort of in practice, really, an infinitely number of times. So that's the sort of average number that we would expect to get on our die if we took the average over all of those throws. But we can sort of use intuition. We don't need to necessarily use a formula to calculate this, right? Because we sort of know that it's going to be halfway from the top and sort of halfway from the bottom. So it's going to be between three and four. And in the case of a fair, uh, fair die, rather, it's just going to be three and a half. And, and that's kind of quite easy to see just because of the way in which we've written this list here. But in sort of more complicated problems, it might not be so easy to see what the actual expectation is going to be. OK, so that's sort of using intuition. How do we actually go about finding this value three and a half? using the sort of mathematical way. So if just applying this formula, we have the first thing is going to be the probability that our random variable x is equal to 1. And then we're going to have to multiply it by this x up here. So in this case, it's just going to be 1. And then the second value is going to be the probability that our random variable takes on the value x is equal to 2. And then we're going to multiply that by 2 because that's now the value which our x takes on. And we're going to sort of continue this all the way up to the probability that x equals 6 times 6. And in this sort of fair die, because we sort of defined all these probabilities here, each of these probabilities is the same. So it's just 1 over 6 times 1 plus 1 over 6 times 2, sort of plus 1 over 6 times 3, all the way up to 1 over 6 times 6, which, if you do the maths, just adds up to 21 over 6. OK, so that's a sort of discrete case, but and we've talked about what the actual formula is. But what's the intuition behind this particular formula? Why do we actually use this sort of formula here? Well, you can sort of think about this as a weighted sum. I mean, if this probability wasn't here, then it would just be a sum over all x. So that would just be literally a, a sum over all x values. But these probabilities actually provide the weighting in that sum. And it just so happens that all the weights were the same in this particular example. So all the probabilities were the same in this example. So that's kind of the logic behind why we got three and a half, because it's sort of halfway down our list. But in general, the probabilities won't be the same. And the sort of weights which the probabilities apply are sort of intuitively sort of providing more weight to those observations which are more likely to occur. So that's why you can use this formula to calculate the expected value of x for the discrete case.
So I've rubbed out some of our working on the left-hand side and rewritten the formula for the expectations such that we have enough space to write out the expectations of a continuous random variable on the right-hand side. So what is an example of a continuous random variable? Well, the example which I've tried to indicate here with these sort of stick men at the top is the example of taking the height of a randomly selected individual within a population. So we might think that the sort of frequency distribution which we might get in this case might sort of be normally distributed around some sort of height. So perhaps the sort of average height in a population is 150 centimetres. So perhaps the PDF might look something like this, where we've sort of got our distribution centred around 150. So how do we go about working out the expectations of the case where we've got a continuous variable or a continuous random variable. So we have a PDF representing the probability of obtaining particular values across all continuous space. So how do we calculate the expectation of a continuous random variable? Well, it's actually exactly analogous to the discrete case. But in this case, we now have to represent our sort of weighting, which in this sort of half was represented by this sort of P of X equals X, by a continuous function, because now our random variable can take on all continuous values. So, and that particular weighting is provided by the PDF, which I've indicated by F of X here. And then all we need to do is we just need to multiply that by X and then integrate across X. So it's exactly the same sort of case as a discrete um, example, except now we don't have a sum, we have an integral, which is this sort of continuous version of the sum anyway. But what does it actually mean to integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity? Well, in this particular example, we wouldn't need to do that because there are scarcely any people who are over, let's say, three meters in height, or I've used centimeters here, so that would be 300, and there's definitely no one below zero centimeters. So in this case, our integral would go from naught to 300. And if we did the integral right, in this case, we should find that the sort of value which we would get on average, if we were to sort of take an infinitely many number of people from our population and then take the average of their heights, should be 150 centimeters.